Shalom, everyone. This is Dr. William Sneblin of With One Accord Ministries. And this is basically a short response to a question that somebody raised concerning one of our previous videos. We, we did a video a couple weeks ago concerning uh, the tzitzit, the, um, the tassels that are mentioned in uh, Numbers 15 uh, as being part of the garment of a set-apart person. And just to refresh everybody's memory, I'm going to read from that passage. This is Numbers 15, verse 38. Yahuwah says, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Note that, throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Verse 39, And it shall be for unto you for a fringe, that they may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and to do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and after your own eyes, after which you may you, you used to go a-whoring. So the idea here is this is a, a visual symbol to remind us, as I said in the first video, it's all kind of like wearing a wedding ring you know, to remind you of the fact that you are under a covenant with your wife. Well, in the same way, we, if we are followers of Yehushua, we are under the covenant uh, of, of Israel. And so we have these um, tassels here, and, and I mentioned in the video that typically, if you look at the, um, if you look at pictures like in Jerusalem or whatever, or you see Jewish people walking around there wearing all white tzitzit. And I point out that this is unfortunate because this is the way they're supposed to be. They're supposed to have this ribbon of blue. You heard it right there in the Torah. And see, uh, this individual um, contacted us and said, well, the rabbis have taught that we, uh, we are only supposed to wear the white ones because over the centuries of persecution and being out of the land of Israel, which all of which is true, that that we no longer know for sure what the uh, what the source of that blue color is, and some of them will even talk about how there is this this mollusk, this you know shellfish type animal in the Mediterranean that's called a chylazon, and that this chylazon is a source of this brilliant blue color. And some people have theorized in Israel and among the scholarship that this, this, this mollusk, the sea animal, is the source of the blue pigment. And because we, can, we don't know for sure, we shouldn't do it. Well, first of all, I would submit to you that it's highly unlikely that when, when the Israelites were out in the wilderness in essentially Arabia, in and around Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai, not the one that's the tourist attraction, um, they were in Arabia. And if you've seen pictures of Arabia, there's not a lot of snails running around. There's not a lot of shellfish running around because it's a desert. I mean, there's very, very little water, very little water. And what water there was came from Abba. So, you know, then the other problem is you got you got over six hundred thousand people that are supposed to make these zit zit these these tassels these fringes and wear them, and where are they going to get that many you know mollusks you know bigger problem mollusks are not kosher they're shellfish they're unclean just like lobsters just like clams just like shrimp those are all forbidden unclean animals in the Torah. Yahuwah says they're disgusting. He says they're abominable. So why on earth would he turn around and command his people to wear a blue color that was derived from an unclean animal? No, I don't think that's very likely. So, you know, here is the problem. If you look at it historically, what happened was this. The, the Israelites got into a lot of battles with the Roman army right after the time of Yehushua. And as many of you know, in 70 AD, the temple fell. It was destroyed by the Romans after a, a Jewish uprising. Then, later on, about 50 years later, it was another rebellion took place known as the Bar Kokhba Rebellion, 
And in that one, the Romans just decided the heck with these wretched Jewish people and they went in and just destroyed Jerusalem. They renamed it, they called it Aeola Capilotina and they basically drove all the Israelites out of the Holy Land and they renamed it Palestine. And that, my friends, is part of the reason why we're having the problems today that we have with the so-called Palestinians. Well, anyway, that's another topic, but here's the point. At some point during this time, the Roman emperor decreed that nobody was allowed to wear the color bluish purple, except members of his family, people who were part of the Roman imperial court. And so that was the color of the tzitzit, of what is called in Hebrew, this blue thread is called uh, techelet in Hebrew. And he said it's illegal. So basically, the Jews who were already being driven from pillar to post and back and forth, you know, and being persecuted up one side, sold into slavery, all of these things, the rabbis decided to just kind of make an allowance and they decreed, and I'm not faulting them for this, that the, that the Yahudim, the Jewish people, should just wear white tzitzit. And so they made that ruling you know, something like 18, 1900 years ago. And that's okay. But now the point is, and here's the point of people today that have, have restored the blue, is Israel is back in the land. The Roman Empire, at least in the form it was then, is gone. And it doesn't matter where the blue stuff come from. came from. It doesn't say that in the Torah. It doesn't specify in the Torah. Oh, it's got to be from this mollusk, or it's got to be from a certain plant. A lot of scholars believe it was from the indigo plant. But none of that really matters. The point is, it says we're supposed to wear tzitzit with a ribbon of blue. And it says that this is for all generations. It doesn't say it's just until like 200 AD and then we can do something else. No, it says for all generations. If you believe the Bible and you believe that you're a follower of Yehushua, Yehushua wore tzitzit with blue in them. All the disciples wore tzitzit with blue ribbons in them. No exceptions. No exceptions. So if you want to be a follower of Yehushua, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not faulting the rabbis for what they've done in the past, but I'm just saying, hey, you're back in the land, you know, and, I mean, especially in, in America, I mean, there's really not any large amount of persecution of Jewish people. There's no reason why you can't have a blue thread in your tzitzit. But you see, they've done the very thing that Yehushua warned them about way back in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, you have made the tradition, by your traditions, you have made the word of Elohim to be of none effect. And that's not good. And, you know, obviously we love the Jewish people, we love the rabbis, but yet sometimes they get so admired in their traditions that they lose sight of the truth of the Torah. And that's all we want to share. So this has been kind of a response to that question. That is why we wear blue in our tzitzit because Yahuwah told us to. So hopefully this has been of help to people who are wondering about this. Again, if these kind of messages are helpful, we would encourage you to subscribe to our channel to share this video, and, and please visit our website. Our website is withoneaccord.org. We have a tremendous number of free resources and also books and DVDs there to bless you and to edify you and to help train you up in the ways of Scripture. So, shalom, thank you, and be blessed in the name of Yahushua.